But when he saw the multitudes, he was moved with compassion on them, because they were weary and scattered like sheep having no shepherd. Give me your tired, your poor, your huddled masses yearning to breathe free. The wretched refuse of your teeming shores, send these, the homeless, tempest-tossed to me. I lift my lamp beside the golden door. These are the words that are inscribed on the Statue of Liberty in New York City. Dedicated on October 28, 1886, this statue was one that called out to all people all over the world, in all nations, no matter who they are and where they would come from, that all were welcome to come to America. This meant that all people from all walks of life that wanted a better life, a free life, one that would take them away from the oppressions of their former countries, could come in with the promise of life, liberty, and justice. The Statue of Liberty stands as a symbol of universal freedom, freedom to all, and not just some. Hello again, God's beautiful people, and welcome to another episode of 5 Minutes. It's the show that's committed to bringing you uplifting an inspirational word to help you through those hard times. Now, I'll probably get into trouble by some of my friends and followers of my page. There are some that will be totally turned away because of this message. But that's okay because, like God told Ezekiel, go to the people and speak the word and tell them what I said, regardless if they listen or not. Now, like I do on most of my messages, I like to give a definition of what each word means so that you can get a clear picture of what the Lord has placed in my heart. This week, he allowed me to turn on the radio at just the right moment to hear people discussing the events that are going on down at the southern border. And it was at that point that I knew that I had to put this together as this has been laid on my heart for the entire week. The word compassion as defined by Webster's Dictionary means to have sympathetic pity and concern for the sufferings or misfortunes of others. It means to have concern, empathy, and an understanding of what others may be going through. Compassion is what Jesus felt when he saw the people that were living in conditions that kept them empty, weighed down, and without meaning. He felt sadness when he saw that there were some living high on the hall while others were barely able to make ends meet. He felt a deep sense of compassion on those that were being led astray by false teachers, preachers, and other leaders. Compassion is what Jesus Christ had on each of us on the day when he came into our lives. It wasn't because we had power or riches. It was because we were lost and without a shepherd. It was because of his great compassion. The words of Jesus Christ teaches us that we ought to have compassion on all men, women, and children, regardless of their background, race, or religion. We ought to show genuine love for all, even to those who do not show love to us. In John 15 and 12, Jesus said to us, This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. He had compassion on the multitude because they stayed with him for days on end without anything to eat. The biblical meaning of the word compassion is to be moved inwardly, to yearn with tender mercy, affection, pity, and empathy. It is the greatest movement of emotions that is possible. To have compassion on others means that we, like Jesus, are moved over their physical and emotional pains as well as their suffering. It means that we care about the things that they are in need of and our desire to lend them a helping hand. To have compassion means that I cry with those who are suffering a great need and desire as I look to release them from the burdens of their sufferings. When we see others that are seemingly lost, we feel something for them. We know that if they turn to God, that they will experience his love and tender mercies. We yearn within our hearts for our fellow man because we have compassion. There are people right now in this country who go to bed hungry each day. They have no roof over their heads in which they can call home. And we have millions living on the streets across this country because they fell on hard times. Children are being collected and torn away from their families simply because they're different from us. We say that we have love for one another, but what kind of love is that that cheers the splitting up of families? Why is it that everything is all good until it lands on our doorstep? There's no greater love than a man who lays down his life for one of his fellow man. 
For millions of immigrants, the Statue of Liberty and their first glimpse of it meant that they were no longer held down by their former lives. It meant to them that they were now free to live a life that would give them something better for their families. It meant that they can achieve the American dream. Give me your tired and poor. Lady Liberty stood with open arms to welcome all those who came in to her. Those who were wretched and torn down, she stood at the ready to receive them. Jesus Christ stands ready to receive all those who come to him. It means that he's always willing and ready to receive all those who are tired and poor, those who are burdened down and wretched. He says, come to me and I will give you rest. I will set you free. He doesn't care who or what we are. He doesn't de demand to see if we are the right status, the right race or color. He doesn't even demand to see our immigration papers as he gives us all the same love and tender care. No matter who you are in Christ, he has compassion on you and he stands ready to receive us in faith. He calls you to himself from afar. He gives you rest from the burdens of your sins. He gives you rest. The Statue of Liberty with her lamp held high as the doorway to freedom. But Jesus Christ is the doorway to heaven. He is the way, the truth, and the life. He's the doorway to eternal life. Well, that's my time. I pray that you all have a blessed week. Nobody is more dangerous to the work of God than a leader who is outside the will of God. One love, five minutes.